Hey, what's up, everyone? How you doing? It's me, Mr. 4K Upscaler. All right, so what we have here is Apple 4K TV, and what do you see on the top left corner? You see Saving Private Ryan. Now, I want to talk about something that uh, a lot of you don't seem to understand about how chroma upsampling works. Okay, chroma upsampling is the color output that your HDMI communicates between your TV and your device. Now, depending on what type of device you have and depending on what type of HDMI HDCP device you have that's outputting that signal and then compressing it through the uh, high bandwidth HDMI cable. That's why they call it high speed cable, high bandwidth HDMI cable. Then you will be able to utilize that chroma RGB. Every TV has RGB in case you didn't know. Okay, but we're talking about HDR here, and we're talking about 10-bit televisions and compressions. It is very important that you understand that when I say 12-bit compression, that's not a true 12-bit. It's a compression, meaning that you will see slightly noticeable deep dark levels on some areas and slightly a little bit more color pop on certain areas now from afar you won't be able to see that difference but if you get really close to a tv and what i'm going to do here i'm going to zoom in i'm going to show you the difference you're going to see uh for one example with saving private ryan here's the movie that was uh filmed with a specific type of a film 20 years ago 1998 right specific type of a millimeter film all right, it was cut in a, on a celluloid and didn't have all this other extra digital features that we have now. You know, it was done on celluloid, okay? It was cut on celluloid. It was filmed on film. Of, I don't know which millimeter it was and used a different type of lenses and different types of color that was put into a film, meaning that grain will always be there. But... I just want to show you that implementing chroma upsampling with HDR does show a little bit of that compression of the color, okay? When the movie is filmed, when the movie is filmed, there's always going to be a re recording of the environment and of the color, okay? Doesn't matter uh, which camera you filmed it with, you can always restore that color, okay? from the negative, from the film. I don't have time to go through all the technical details of going through that, but you can do it. <laughs> That's how these movies like Blade Runner are remastered in HDR and Close, of, uh, Close, Close Encounters of the Third Kind are remastered. All right? I could spend three hours, four hours boring you to death with all the technical details of how is that done, but you can Google that yourself. What I'm here to do is I'm here to show you that chroma upsampling with 12-bit compression does help. I'm going to turn it on and off, and I'm going to show you the difference. All right, first thing first, let me explain this to you. A lot of people have confusion between 420 and 422. Okay, the difference between the 420 and 422, it's that they both pretty much are identical. The only difference is 420 enables you to have that 4K with 10-bit color. 422 chroma upsampling with a high bandwidth HDMI cable allows you to have more of that clarity and bitrate of that program. All right. Now, 444, it's RGB. That one actually gives you the best possible compression, all right? But both 422 and 444 are pretty much identical to the RGB, all right? The only difference you will notice is 420. 420 will give you that high-quality picture, but it's going to stay at that one uh, certain bandwidth of level, okay? 422 is going to use a higher bandwidth, Okay, the, the more bandwidth you have, the more picture clarity you can store, okay? 
If you have 444, then you can store a hell of a lot more compression of color and higher picture quality. This is really not that difficult to understand. But they're all 10-bit on this television. Okay, I need you to understand this. They're all 10-bit because this is a 10-bit panel. I'm not doing this video to tell you, hey, look at this. I have a 12-bit. No, I don't. There are no 12-bit televisions. They don't exist. It's really important that you get that and that you understand that. There is no 12-bit panels as of time me recording this video. They're all 10-bit. We're talking about chroma upsampling that gives us a better detail in color and sharpness and bit rate by using a different methods of upsampling, okay? And that's what this is. If you want to go with the 420, that's the recommended standard. Go with the 420. But if you go with the 422 or 444, then you're going to get a little bit better clarity and color. And I'm going to show it to you. Okay. Let's do uh, one example. Okay. Let me go. I'm not going to use Saving Private Ryan. I'm going to use a different type of a movie here. I'm going to use one example here. Um, okay. Uh, how about... How about Inception? I'm going to use the Inception as a uh, one example. So let me let me show you the Inception with 422 okay I zoomed it in a little bit so you guys can see it that's why it looks a bit you know a little bit blurry because it's the uh, upscale to 4k with HDR compression of, of 12 bit that I'm using from 422 chroma upsampling and look at the color I haven't messed with anything here I left everything at 50 50 color it's balanced but look at the color the way it pops uh, on Leonardo DiCaprio face and just look how much you're going to lose of this deep color output detail when you switch to 420. I'm going to go ahead and switch now to 420 chroma upsampling instead of 422. 422 and 444 are pretty much identical, guys. The only difference with 444, you have unlockable compression, meaning that you can store as much color as you want. So here, let me show you the difference in about two seconds. And I want you to see, just keep an eye right here on the color on Leonardo DiCaprio's face when I switch to 420. I'm going to switch to 420 right now. And just look how much we have lost of that color and deep dark levels and the bit rate because we chose to go with the 420 instead of 422 chroma upsampling. And just keep an eye when I switch to 422 chroma upsampling with the 12 bit compression that I'm using here. Just look what's going to happen. And just look the amount of color you got and the detail and the deep dark levels. Everything has been enhanced much better here. And I'm using a one example. This is a what you're looking at here, it's a standard. 1080p movie upscaled to 4k that doesn't even support HDR it supports a compression of HDR with chroma upsampling now chroma upsampling it's not like a huge drastic difference but it does help it does improve picture quality that's the whole point I'm trying to make it does improve picture quality and it does improve colors in some areas and brightness with deep dark levels in some areas as well with the RGB. Okay? So if you if you have a good TV and your TV can handle uh 422 and 444, then go with that. Why wouldn't you want to go with that? You know. You just have to make sure that your TV and your device it's connected through a really good high bandwidth HDMI cable. I recommend AudioQuest. There's others. Make sure it's gold plated. All right, for stability. And make sure that your device supports HDCP 2.2. I don't have time to go like 
in, in, for hours here trying to explain to you the difference between uh, HDCP 2.2 and the standard one. All right. Just in simple basic terms, uh, HDCP 2.2, it's a pass through, meaning it's unlockable for dynamic metadata, meaning you can put any kind of uh, format, any kind of AGR format through it. Okay. And everything I tell you here, you guys can research and do your own research. Okay. That's why they call it a pass through. All right. It's not a limited pass through, it is a pass through. Just depending on your television and your device as to how much of that information they can pass through. The more bandwidth, the more information they can pass through, the better the picture is going to be. All right. And 422 and 444, chroma upsampling requires a higher bandwidth information so that you can have that compression and better clarity on your device. So there you have it, guys. All right. There's no misinformation here. I'm just trying to help you out. Now, if you have a hard time understanding this and you want to believe that there's no difference, hey, that's fine by me. You can believe that all day long, all you want. But there is a difference. If there was no difference, then they wouldn't include it, would they? They wouldn't have the different types of chroma op sampling if there was no difference. There is a difference, okay? But that difference will depend on your equipment, and it'll depend on your device and on your TV and your HDMI cable that you're using. Okay? I spend a lot of time researching this. Okay? I don't just go and, like, talk out of my ass and trying to, oh, look this, look that. If I wanted to make a clickbait video, I could do that. I can put some capital letters out there and make a clickbait video like everybody else out there make that quick buck. All right? I'm just here trying to help you out. But you also have to understand that it depends on your equipment, on your television, on your HDMI cable. You have to have all of these elements necessary in order for you to get that high bandwidth. All right? So, there you go. And uh, please don't bother writing me down in the comment sections, uh, love and peace letter. I know how to use Google. I know how to research. I don't need you copy and paste to me. All right? all of this information because I know it, all right? And you guys can learn it too. There are differences between different chroma op samplings, okay? All right, so thank you for watching. Have a good one, guys.